Hey guys, Ray from Love you RV. I'm back with part two of my HaloView Bite Tangle rear and side view wireless camera system. So in part one, I kind of introduced it to you, showed all the, the things that were included, the new features, and we did an install, installation on my Keystone Cougar fifth wheel. But just in summary, the, the cool new features are you have 1080p resolution versus the old 720p, and that is, that's including the recordings. Uh, new generation wireless tech for less lag and interference. Uh, interference free reception for vehicles up to 65 feet guaranteed, so you no longer need that to kind of repeater box that some cameras need. Uh, full color dim light night vision, which I showed on the first video. Uh, controllable night vision fill lights, so kind of like spotlights from each camera with really high intensity LEDs you can turn on and off. And also can be linked to the Sense 3 blind spot radar, which I installed a few months back and I was able to test the integration with this system. So uh, if you missed this video, you can go back and watch that and, and get a, a get a feel for all the the parts that are included and how it was installed. Uh, this video we're going to go and uh, do a few more things. We're going to give you some real life footage of it in action and I'm also going to show you how I've refined my installation in my dash. I've kind of hidden a lot of wires and stuff and made it really slick for me. And then finally we'll we'll give you a, a look deep inside, like a deep dive into the, the settings on the display. There's quite a bit of settings and features that I'll show you on the display. And I'll come back with my final thoughts on it. So let's get to it. So we'll give you a quick look at my tidied up installation here. So like I said in the first video, I like to have mine on the rear view mirror. It's just a natural place for me to look when I'm towing the trailer, just like looking in the the regular rear view mirror. So I have it strapped up there with one of their uh, mirror kits that I had from a previous uh, a kit that came with a with a mirror holder. I think the Halo View sells it on their site or you can pick it up at Amazon. Um, only problem is it uh, had a problem with the antennas. Um, I could only get one antenna to fit. Um, but luckily my brother-in-law is into RF communications and stuff. So around his shop he had enough pieces to make me a little extension. So on this side here I put in a small elbow and see it up there. Um, just let me show you some footage from this side. Anyway that made it sit quite nicely with my mirror there and my uh, Signal strength was good enough in my test, no problems there. Um, so your mileage may vary. Um, they do come with dash mounts, so you can have it set here with the antennas pointing up. But I kind of don't like that uh, blocking my view. Um, it's one of the cons to this system is the antennas are quite large. I almost feel like it'd be nice if they could take the antenna and have it come out the side and maybe come straight down if we, if as an option or up or down. Then I could have them just sitting on each side like that. Anyway, that seems to work out fine for me. So while I was at it, I took the power cords and the cords for the Sense 3 blind spot radar system and I ran them along the headrest down the pillar and underneath. So they're all nicely hidden. And then I've actually put the, the Sense 3 uh, unit down here. Um, it needs to get GPS signal and wireless signal to the, the back uh, sensors. Um, so I tested it here and it was fine. It's really meant to sit on the dash, but it's kind of nice to have it down here. And it seemed to test okay in my truck. What I did with its light indicators, I used to have them on the, the pillars on each side of the truck. But what I did is I, I wound it, wiring through my dash and I've actually put them on either side down here. So when I'm driving, they, they light up down there. I used to have them mounted kind of over here and then over on the other pillar. So now they light up bright right there. So I know if a car is passing me, bang, it's gonna light up and I know there's somebody over there or if it's lit up over there, I know somebody's over there. You can see right now it's showing split screen because it's actually picking up trees right now. We're in a campsite. 
but that's what it would look like if cars were on each side of me um, it would it would change over like that so that's kind of cool anyway everything is all nicely slickly mounted and out of the way and just to show you this would be more of a typical mounting scenario person would uh, use their power socket down there and just simply have a, a dash mount like that so you're driving along and you look over there a lot of people with motor homes have a nice deep dash so they'd probably be more inclined to do that so I'm not saying you have to mirror mount it or anything also you're gonna get better signal when these are straight up like that you'll get a better uh, signal strength than getting it up in the mirror and having to bend the antenna sideways they they work better if they're perpendicular like that but mine has seemed to work fine so I'm gonna go with my method but I thought I would just show you what uh, is kind of the typical installation for the, the rear view camera So here we go. So let's go through the display and all the settings. On the display you'll see some icons up top. That's the signal strength there. Five bars is full signal. Uh, channel 2. There's four different channels on this uh, system. I'm using three of them. Uh, you can see here there's a speaker that's muted. So I have the audio muted on this camera. Uh, there's a little light bulb here, and that means the LED floodlight is on. So if it gets dark out, um, that will come on and uh, illuminate the, the area. So you can control each camera and have the, the floodlight feature on or off. Um, I guess you'd want it off if you're driving around. I think there'd be enough ambient light that it wouldn't, wouldn't affect it. I haven't tested it. Anyway, then there's record. That means right now it's recording the footage. And then this little spinny thing is that means it will overwrite the, the last recordings when it hits the end of the card. This squiggly line here is the Sens 3 blind spot radar. That means it's hooked up and working. And this just is a file folder, meaning there's, there's uh, videos that have been recorded. Um, let's go through the menu. There's some... Uh, on the side here, there's some buttons. I can light them up. There's an automatic uh, light sensor here for in the nighttime. So you can see there's S that switches the cameras, plus and minus, enter, and menu, and power on and off. So I'm just going to hit menu, brings up this menu. And when you want to enter, you just go into the, the menu in there. So there's volume and mute. I generally keep my cameras muted. I don't really uh, need to hear the sound on them and the wind sound can be quite annoying on it. So I keep them muted. Uh, you can choose when you arrive at a campground. So you could you could turn on the, the sound on the rear if you want to listen to someone that's helping you give instructions or whatever like that. Test one, two, three, check in the audio, check in the audio. Test, test, test. One, two, three, check, check, check. Checking the audio on the camera. That's one, two, three. Uh, next, we'll go into pairing. My cameras were already paired, but if you need to pair your cameras, you'd go into this. You'd hit that, and on a button on the, the camera, you'd hold it down, and then it would, it would sync to that camera. This display disappears quite quickly. That's why it's going away. Uh, picture, if we enter into there, we can see brightness. Uh, you can enter in there, you can change brightness and contrast and sharpness. You can see this thing can get really bright. This is what they call an IPS display. That's one great feature. It's got a ton of brightness. So if you're having it mounted somewhere where the, a lot of light or sunlight is, you can still see your camera. And then down here is that LED I was talking about. Go into that, turn that off. And you can see the little icon gets grayed out at top there. That little light bulb goes gray. That means it's off. And we'll just back out of that menu. Next one is the mirror menu. And this is important for setting up cameras. If you mount them a certain way, you can always flip them, reverse them, or up and down. 
you'll notice in my my footage some of the stuff is backwards and it seems like it's all wrong when you're watching a video but you got to keep in mind I'm using this as a rear view mirror so for me when I'm driving it all makes sense a car comes up on my right hand side but to the to the this it looks like it's all reversed and, and wrong but trust me when you're actually using it as a rear view mirror it makes sense so anyway that's a, a good feature to be able to flip everything around to get it all lined up now there's Q mode so there's all kinds of different ways you can view your cameras <clears throat> in that mode and depending on how many cameras you have or how you want to set it up lots of options there and down here is play you can go in and play back videos right on here you can also pull the card out and play on your computer let's just find one here there we go so that's just a some footage that was recorded behind the rig and then next we have record this is you can set the time you can turn your recording on or off cover means it will overwrite or cover over the the old stuff and then you can also format the card in that menu park line pretty self-explanatory i don't use it at all but you know if it was in some type of vehicle where you want to back into spaces you you might turn that on and you can set it for each cam and then we got scan you can have this thing automatically scanning different cameras and also that's where you turn it on and off the the sense 3 radar system so you can set scan time and you can have it automatically scanning your cameras and then fine oops let me we'll go to setup in here and so you can turn cameras on and off i don't have a camera 3 so i have it turned off of off of things there's a couple of formats auto dim oops that is fast there we go so auto dim you could turn it on and off and that will will set the the display dim and then key light is this light over here that turns on when it's dark so you can turn that on and off there anyway that's about it for the menu and it's pretty easy once you get it figured out nice and clean has all the different features well there's my completed install and also uh, a deep dive into the menuing and settings of the the bt7 so while i give you some footage of it actually in action these are uh, clips that i recorded i'll go through kind of a summary of the review so after a couple of weeks and a couple hundred test miles with the new Halo Byte Tango BT7 Plus system, I'm back. The Halo View systems have always worked well for me and I've been happy with the image quality, but this new system has ramped up the image resolution another notch, especially the recordings. Everything is cleaner and sharper. I didn't get one blackout from interference during over 200 miles of towing on back roads, highways, cities, and in rainy weather. With my previous wireless rear view system, I would get the odd few second blackout occasionally caused by other nearby wireless signals like in dense urban environments or when other cars with wireless equipment would pass me. Uh, the wireless lag has been improved. High speed motion is smoother and the video tracking of vehicles is more accurate compared to their actual locations. Um, in past systems, you would you would see the car in the video but the actual real life location would be a little bit further ahead of it. This one, they're much tighter um, where it is and where it actually shows in the video. Uh, the color balance and exposure compensation are excellent. Uh, I had uh, that this test footage was done during one of those kind of bright white sky days, which is always really hard for cameras because of the, all the different varying contrast levels. And I think it did a pretty good job. Uh, they have what they call the IPS display, which is nice and bright, and it's also viewable from side angles. You don't have to look, be looking straight on if you're just off to the side. It's still pretty bright and clear to your eye. Uh, the Byte Tango's integration with the Halo View Sensory Blind Spot radar worked as advertised. When a vehicle approached from the rear of our fifth wheel trailer, the display would auto switch to the side camera view. 
then switch back once the vehicle had cleared the front of our truck. If multiple vehicles passed by, it would hold the side view until they all cleared. Or if cars were passing on both sides, the display would show a split screen showing both side cameras at the same time. Um, there's only really a couple dislikes that I have here. Um, not many negative things to say about the Byte Tango, but here are a few. The display antennas are relatively large and impede the view if the display is dash mounted. Uh, and they actually stick up so far that they kind of collide into the windshield on my truck because it's angled so much if I want to put it deeper into the dash. Uh, if it's mounted on the rear view mirror as, as I do, they stick up too far and up ended up installing a little elbow and extension wire as I showed. Uh, when using the Sense3 radar I noticed a brief pause between switching the camera views. It wasn't instantaneous so there was kind of a maybe a one to two second lag as it switched from one camera to the other. Also it took an extra few seconds to switch back after the vehicles had passed us. So I lost critical rear view camera viewing for longer than I'd like in heavy congested highways or city driving. So I'd probably end up having to turn that sensory off if, if I had a lot of traffic going on or it would be too distracting all the camera switching going on. But in conclusion, overall I love the Byte Tango BT BT7 system. As I said, I was happy with the older models of Halo View, but glad to see that Halo View is continuing to redesign and improve their rear monitor cameras and displays. And I look forward to using this as my primary RV rear view system. If any issues crop up, other than what I've what I've, ex I've explained, I'll be sure to let you know. Till next time, Ray from Love You RV. Cheers, everyone.